screen the August 12, 2024 uh, special board meeting as a big barrier, big barrier regional wastewater agency to, and to order. Um, Please join me in honoring our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Who will the agenda? Um, I do have a question about the agenda. I, yeah, looks like we still have a reasonable amount of people here who want to talk on the uh, for the item of the EIR for the refund picture. I, I don't know if the board would be willing to do possession. We'll split, split those two items so that we can. Otherwise, the uh, job is going to be waiting for to come back from the session. It's fine with me. Makes sense. So you need a motion and a second. So we need a motion and a second. So it's just to, I guess, push the closed session with all the business. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Vice Chair Herrick. Aye. Director Russo. Aye. <laughs> Director Sanofia. Aye. Director Walsh. Aye. And Chair Miller. Aye. All right, moving on then to old business is our resolution um, 8 um, Barry Regional Wastewater Agency adopting the environmental findings and statement of overriding considerations, uh, including the California Environment Quality Act, certifying the Replenished Big Bear Program, final and environmental impact report, adopting the mitigation monitoring reporting program, and approving the program. Staff actually, at this time, since we've already actually given the presentation, this is a continuation. Um, we don't have a presentation tonight. Um, it's at the chair's leisure to uh, allow for public comment and then uh, take it back to the, the uh, board for discussion. We do have response to comments for friends of Big Bear. Okay. Tonight. But yeah, they so were, they were so this is not a public hearing. What we did was we uh, Continue to close the public hearing last time and continue this the day certain. Um, public hearing is closed, but we, we we are allowed to have public input at this time. So, do we have any car? Anybody Sandy? Want to speak on this item? I have one. Thank you. I'm glad you made that clarification. The last one you went to. Sandy, Mike, you're first. Um, I just wanted to point out that I added some more questions. And we got to get these ones back. Um, I'm just still confused about why it does need to be in such a hurry. It's to be given all of the details in that like it's supposed to be. In the environmental document applications and everything I know that we could be done. So I just wanted to put that in the record. I don't know, I guess it's probably I think it can be good that this thing needs to be done right. And there are a lot of things that still remain that really, um, I just think they need to be answered before this thing has been done. Daniel. Good evening, people. I can see that we have a whole table of BBK people here. So that means you want to pass this hell or high water. What else is new? Andy, I hope you know. You know, we just had a director of Secret Service that tried her best to kill our president in our government. We've had numerous other things in our government that is just absolutely insane. And now you people want to spend all kinds of money for us poor slobs out here as piss ants. 
to pay the property tax, uh, yeah, property tax rates, and other things. Why is that? Last week, you weren't even sure about the equipment. It could be this type of equipment, it could be that type of equipment, it's high altitude, low altitude. It doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. That after what, how many, 10 years, and you claim $10 million you spent doing this? And nobody can put out any clear ideas, any clear things to make this work. Why is that? You give a thousand pages, a thousand pages here, a thousand pages over there, and three lawyers? Are you a lawyer down there in the blue? Why do you have three lawyers here? I'll tell you why, because you guys screw it up so badly. This is nothing more than toilet to tap. We've got water going down the, to Lucerne for 50 years. 50 years. And I keep hearing, oh, well, you know, the Mojave water industry, we're going to do this or that. What do we find out if that's going to happen? Is it going to happen now or 10 years from now? And why would that be closed up? It seems like it's been in good use for many years and not spend a ton of money. Can any of you explain that to me? Probably not. <sighs> it's simply a toilet to tap. So how much is that gonna cost us on our property tax? How much is that gonna cost us in extra expense? Well, I'll tell you, like what happened to Big Bear Disposal, they brought in 20,000 or 15,000 trash cans, and it was just a big cluster. They brought in all these trash cans, and then picked them all up, and denied, oh, well, we shouldn't have done this, we shouldn't have done that. Unbelievable. Have you checked, have you checked what the hell happened? On that government cluster, do you know how many trash cans? They say they have trash cans over in their warehouse on the North Shore. That's a lie. Where are they? What did it cost? Did anybody investigate? We don't have any investigations. We have corruption. We don't have honest people. We have typical, I used to call it swamp, now it's just a septic tank passing of laws. And when you have to have this many BBK people here, it really makes me wonder. So you can do, of course you wanna pass it because you want that 20 million or $25 million. Does that only come up once in a lifetime? You have to do something wrong. It seems like our city, Big Bear Lake, they push you up against the wall. They say, well, we don't do this now. We're going to lose this 27 million. Well, maybe you should lose it. Maybe you should not back people back up against the wall. Maybe you should do something properly. Maybe you should get more information. But you don't. And I'm just amazed at how you do it. So you're going to buy new trucks, you know, add on to your building, more pay, another 100000 in payroll. Big Bear Disposal bought a whole new fleet of trucks. Have you checked on that? They bought all kinds of new stuff. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Anybody else? Joyce? So everybody can have a podcast okay. now. Okay. Thank you. My name is Joyce. The GPA agreement that created this borrowing agency never got the consent of the government and moved ahead in the shadows without the knowledge of the community in which it serves, which is an independent district of the bigger city, Sugar Oak, Baltimore, Lake, and Lake Mills. 
many of us actually live here and have come forward through this past year and have continued to tell you we don't want this, we can't afford this. It, it's a ridiculous project for us. The state and federal agencies continue to dangle carrots in the form of grants in front of you to get you to sell out your community. The amount of money this replenish project would cost using these grants would end up costing more for us than what, it, what the grants are worth. The agency is trying to tax and regulate us in a form of slavery. I would choose to completely disconnect from all services so that I can afford my home and keep my sovereignty and my independence. My family has been here for 62 years and the amount of taxation and utility costs has gotten totally out of control. Here in Big Bear City, we are an independent district of the Big Bear City Community Service District who has no police or regulatory authority. Yet, they continue to act as if CSD community has no say in this project while you plan to impose massive costs, regulations, mandates on us. Mm. Most of the community has no knowledge of your plans because we have not been properly notified. I've personally spoken to many of my neighbors who are completely in the dark. The reason for this massive project hasn't even become law by the state at this time. This whole project is in the presumption that some of them will be required. You continue to expect East, the East End, the CSD district, to not only fund your plan, but to give up our rights as an independent district in local jurisdiction to decide which plan would be best for our community. Now, I want to make sure these lawyers don't really understand that. CSD is an independent district. Our community plans to fight this total government overreach and will fight for justice and liberty awarded to us by the Constitution. If you think this project will happen without fighting, you are mistaken. We will fight for justice regarding the damages as a result of this project. We want accountability, like the trash can issue. We decide for how long, uh, we, we should decide how and when this project happens along with the CSD board, who have repeatedly stated they want the community to not only be informed, but be able to vote on this issue. The Big Bear City Community Service District also unanimously voted not to fund this project. They are the ones accountable because they are the ones that have taken an oath of office to protect our community. I ask our CSD members here on this board to have the courage to do what you know is right and you know what is right. For our community, the property owners and the taxpayers who pay your, your salary and vote on this environmental impact report and replenish. Let's bring this issue back to the CSD community to decide and implement what is best for the East End. Any certification done here today will be challenged and considered not valid. You are hereby notified of a pending lawsuit should you attempt to certify this environmental impact report. When these big decisions are made, but not only when these big decisions are being made, not only are individually, but as a community, we need to be a part of the decision making. This is why we have a right to decide what happens next. Thank you. Thank you. You can't talk. I'm sorry, I'm late. I, didn't, I thought it was 5 30. That's right, just go ahead and go to the podium. Can I talk right now? Yeah. I didn't hear what everybody said, though. So I kind of missed it. Sorry about that, but it's sorry. Thank you, Peter. Okay. I don't know what was said already. It might have been said. You guys know what I'm going to say. And we are a democracy where majority rules and laws and makes all the decisions, period. We do not get to vote or have a say so. It is not a majority, it is a dictatorship, which is what exactly we get here. Put this project on the 24, 25, the 24 ballot, okay? I just woke up. <laughs> Our administrative government will, will keep us slaves like we have been indoctrinated our entire lives by the IRS, the FBI, the CIA, plus, 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 any of the three letters in the whole world means that we are the slaves. We are the sovereign people and we are demanding you stop this project. Each and every one of you will be held responsible for the action you are taking today. It is a matter of time before it's over with three. Stop this fraudulent boondoggle project now. 
control our infrastructures and control our world and leave us with a $150 million debt to be paid by our local taxpayers. We are living in an economy time bomb right now. Our economy is done. We cannot afford people like you to be making decisions about without a public vote, period. Any of you. March 21st, Big Bear Grizzly, five out of five Big Bear CSD members say no to the water project. No. What part don't you understand? No to the water project. Says it. Okay. Three Barwa board members, John Russo, Larry Walsh, and Kenny Segovia have voted no against the water, water project, okay? Two members, Rick Harry, you, and Jim Miller say yes, okay? Majority rules have not counted anymore, three against two, okay? However, apparently, according to the triad of Rick Harry, Jim Miller, Dave Lawrence, just like the good old days, huh? That's everything that you've done forever. For, for, for You guys have been working together for a long time and you know it. It is a fact our local government is a reflection of the Biden-Obama regime and wants to turn all law-abiding constitutionalists into socialists. I want to say pigs, but I'm not going to. Pigs. Our valley has a lot more to lose than to gain, like our fresh spring water that we've had forever, like our or like like the potable water that's in our wells that's going to be destroyed. <clears throat> and no other benefits except for no, no, no other benefits except for governmental control and our infrastructure. They control our infrastructure and they control us, period. They control everything. Take away our infrastructure. Just do that. And a few deep, they, and what, what, what they get? A few deep pocketbooks. It feeds a few deep pocketbooks and huge egos. I don't know who that could be. What monetary gain do each one of you get? And I don't get that. Don't give me this bullshit about, oh, we only make $150. That's bullshit, you know it. We, the people, and the majority of the Big Bear Valley are demanding that you stop this water project today. Stop and face reality. You know what this project is really about. Gain for a few of your pocketbooks only. That's it. This is one of the biggest USA Big Bear Lake. Um, Scams in the in in kind of let's see. Anyway, it's the biggest scams of our lives. Period. Put this on the real. Put this on the ballot. Ask everybody. Just three of you cannot decide that this is going to happen. Anyway, we the people of BigBear.com say no, and I hope you three do not say that. Say because it's majority rules. Majority. Period. Anyway. I don't care. It's a uh, yeah, yeah, speaker. Uh, we're going to go back to the board. Back to the board for the comments and discussion. Are we not going to have Sandy speak? She did. She did. She did. <laughs> oh, I guess she did. Okay. okay. But, all right. Yeah, there's not a yeah, saw someone here. So just a couple of questions. Any questions for the board members? I just want to say I'm a little dismayed that it, it's been a couple months now since Sandy sent us her first letter and that we haven't been able to answer her. I thought by now, you know, we would have answers for her. Her, her answers, her answers have been answered in the, in the. Right. But I mean, she still is sending us a letter saying that she's. Has concerns. I, I understand, but some of those answers that she's asking, we can't address until the, the the answers that she's asking for, we can't address until we actually have the design. It sounds so, like she may not have a level of comfort with that, though. And and there's not a whole lot we can do about that level of comfort. Unfortunately, it just comes when the design is is uh, when the design when we get into the design phase. It'll, we'll have a better level of comfort and and uh, more information to offer with regard to the, the the specific item that she's raised now, which is just on the brine pond itself. I, I, I had a little bit of a similar concern, not not so much on the one answer questions because I do think design is going to dictate that. Um, but I, I noticed that on the um, recommendation number two, you say bring it back to. Uh, Workshop at least 30 days prior to board consideration. 
for the design. Maybe I should ask this of the environmental consultant because they don't want to take this back to environmental review. Is there a, a way to do an environmental opinion on that design? Uh, is there any experience with that? No, we get a design in and we have we have a series of questions here. And we really can't answer those until the final design gets into place, you know, then we're ready to go. But that level of comfort, you know, concerning Sandy's concern and some other people in the audience, is there is there is a way to do that? I, I don't know. I, so every uh this is Caitlin of Tom Dodson and Associate speaking. Um Every environmental component or component of the project will need to be found to be consistent with the EIR, um, the findings in the EIR. And that can be done through a follow on, uh, like through what we, we call uh, in our office, the finding of consistency, where you would file a notice of determination saying that we've reviewed the design, we've reviewed uh, the project, and it can, be, it can go forward through a notice of determination being filed uh, again. And then if for some reason um, the impacts were found to be outside of what was analyzed in the EIR, move forward with an addendum or a follow-on initial study. And then the, the ultimate would be a follow-on EIR, depending upon what the design determines. Um, so there are a lot of checks and balances in the CEQA process where you would be approving today a um, we're considering approval of an environmental impact report that's programmatic in nature. And so it the scope is generally kind of a higher level than uh, a typical EIR for a specific project. Now, this particular EIR has a lot of project detail in it because we did have that sort of information from the 30% design or you know, preliminary design uh, would be the correct term. So does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. I just okay. don't know how to formulate that into the recommendation for approval. There's no need to actually frame it into the recommendation of approval because it's already built into the built in. into the yeah, into the process. So then, 30 days prior to that, if, if, if it, 30 days out there, the determination maybe is consistent with the EIR, uh, and that information will be made available to the general public 30 days in advance of this board. Taking a final vote on that particular design. Yes. A project of that particular design. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. So the uh, concern is protection of birds getting into, I just want to make sure we're clear that, and also possible dust that might be created. Uh, are, there ways, are there ways to mitigate those two issues? The, you know, I don't know, Lane, if you want to address that specifically, but I know the birds there that we talked about netting um, and maybe a lot of it's going to be wet, there's wetted. So there's good. Yeah, I can answer that. Um, this is Lane Carlson with NBC. During final design, we'll consider various ways to you know, provide for physical barriers as well as deterrence for both birds um, and other wildlife. So at that time, we'll be evaluating various alternatives. And so we don't right now have the final decision on um, what's going to be the most effective way to incorporate those features into the design, because we also have to think about the functionality of the form of that system. Like that. Um, so that will be considered during the night. In terms of the concern about wind blown, um, you know, dust or, or the solids really, and um, those ponds will actually never be operated dry. Um, they'll stay, you know, with at least a little bit of water. So that would prevent, um, you know, dried solids from going off the site. And for some reason, um, you know, a pond would uh, just start to dry up or would very easily add some, you know, processed water to keep out of that. So that's part of the operation of the for the pond. So, um, we anticipate that that would be sufficient mitigation to uh, prevent, you know, wind blown uh, solids from moving the site. And there's also, um, you know, what we call free board on the pond. So the actual water level will be a ways below the top of the pond. And that also helps to make sure that um, that, that pond stays inside the pond. So the disposal of the brine is really sort of a sludge from. So yes. I understand that it's not a dried right. material. Yeah. It's not a salty material. Yeah, it should be a highly, highly concentrated, but still wet. Okay. <laughs> and just one other, uh, Dave, this EIR was covered by a grant, correct? 
The I E R R is covered by a grant. Yes. Okay, so that's and then and regardless of whether the project is forward or not, that grant just covers the EIR, and we are in a position of. As long as the grant, as long as the EIR is certified, yeah. then it is covered by a grant. If it is not certified, then it would not be covered by the grant. So if we certify it, then there's actually no cost to the to our rate payers at this time. Um, I don't. I don't. I think everything is 100% covered on the on the EIR. Okay. Any other comments or questions? I'll bring this back for a, for a motion. I move that we adopt resolution R08-2024 and direct staff to include or replenish the full recommendation. I'll second that. Vice Chair Herrick? Aye. Director Russo? No. Director Segovia? No. Director Walsh? No. And Chair Miller? Okay, moving on. Um, we're moving into closed session. So we're going to move into closed session because this is a special meeting. There is no public comment period tonight. So unless, uh, so unless you're here to talk on any items on item six, I don't know if you can. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll probably be on closed session for about half an hour. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, let's bring the meeting back to order. Uh, no reportable action on closed session at this time. We'll move on to new business item 6A award contracts for municipal advisory and placement agent services and retain bond council for your funding big bear final design funding. And then David, I, I would just I would just suggest that we table that uh indefinitely. Yep. Yeah. Do you have a motion for that? Please. Uh, move that we table it. 6A indefinitely. We have a second. I'll second that. Vice Chair Herrick? Aye. Director Russo? Aye. Director Segovia? Aye. Director Walsh? Aye. And Chair Miller? Aye. Item 6B, a work contract for the split training slip line mining project and real estate $595,000. Yes, so uh, if the board recalls at the last meeting, um, you gave me an authorization to advertise that project. Um, it uh, advertises this, this Thursday, um, but just because we're up against a time crunch with weather, uh, paving and those kind of things, um, based on the projected start date, um, we would suggest that the board authorize um, the general manager to award a contract and get um, with this not to exceed number of uh, 1,357,645. Um, and so that way we can make sure that the work gets done timely before winter starts uh, because, because of the paving and the heating of the liner that goes in the um, force main. So um, with that, I'm open for any questions. Board members, are we authorizing to not go out competitive bid because it's an engineering thing, or are we doing a competitive bid? No, we're doing competitive bid. We're expediting it so that way we can beat the winter. Um, and so in, instead of taking the step where I would bring back bids to the board to value, to uh, present back to the board um, the evaluated bids. I'm just going to evaluate them and you're going to uh, authorize, if, if the board chooses, they can authorize me to go ahead and award a contract based on those, uh, on those based on those bids. So this item was not, the 1.3 million wasn't anticipated, is that correct? It wasn't anticipated. We originally had, um, we originally had uh, 762,000 Five hundred and sixty-nine uh, dollars, but based on the evaluation of the uh, line itself, um, WSC felt like we should extend that as far as we can um, west to get all of. There's a high point in the line, and we want to get all of the high point um, either replaced or relined um, with this project and do it all at once. 
And that line's about 50 years old, correct? Yeah, 51 or 52 years old then. How many miles of, of force main do we have in the system? I mean, if we're dealing with that's 3,300 feet, we're looking at 1.3 million for 3,300 feet. Yeah, we have, well, we have the 17 miles that goes down to Lucerne, that's force main. Um, we also have the balance of this line, and I think this is like 12 miles of line. Um, we also have some that comes from um, North Shore. And I, I don't recall exactly um, because some of it's forced and then it turns into gravity fed. Uh, I think that's another six or seven miles. So, so we have quite a bit of line um, that's considered force main. Um, not all of them were put in the same time. This one specifically was put in in the, I think, 1977 or so. Um, the Definitely by 1980, the force main that went down the backside is, was installed as well. Questions? So the force line down to Lucerne uh, at this rate, 1.3 for 3,300 feet, what would that cost us? Just, um, just a quick calc on it. If we, if we, if we said so, uh, there's five thousand two hundred eighty feet in a mile times seventeen miles. We have eighty nine thousand seven hundred sixty. Um, so eighty nine thousand. So, uh, we have a pen record. So eighty nine. So divided by 33 so, yeah. times so 3,300 linear feet, uh, or excuse me, 1.3 million divided by 3,300. Uh, it's $393 per linear foot um, times 89,760. Uh, that is $35 Three hundred and sixty thousand, and that's just for lining. That's for lining. Now I don't know whether we're replacing some, lining some, because remember, four miles is uh, pump, it's pumped up to for four miles, and then it drops off the backside. And we 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 were expecting some high velocities in the line. You'd have a lot of scouring on the line, so I don't know if it would be lining or replacing. So we we'd have to discuss it. That's more, why it'd be more if it was replaced much more if it was replaced. And remember we're dealing with um, the other part that we're not, you know, that doesn't account for here. The difference is all of the environmental, because uh, this is all in forest service land, the, the force main mm -hmm. that goes down the backside. So that when, when Lane and I uh, had a discussion about that lane, that uh, line, uh, she and uh, we made a list and we thought it was about 80 million mm -hmm. to, to uh, either replace or uh, to replace that line, maybe be less if we did a, a lining of the whole thing. We might we might be doing it for fifty or sixty or seventy million, something like that. So I'm just supposing and guessing now, in in light of the Forest Service uh, turning down the permit for Arrowhead water use with their pipes and so forth, it's probably not a slam dunk to go to the Forest Service and expect that they would approve it. No, it is not. That's that's correct. This is this is uh, a, what's in the project budget here that's being proposed is a not to exceed number. Yes. And it really doesn't change anything because I would be bringing back, all I would be doing is bringing back the lowest responsive bidder to the board and they would making they would be making that award as opposed to you authorizing me to do the same job I'm gonna do, but sooner. And you're doing this day because of the asphalt work, right? Asphalt and the curing time and the and the curing temperature of the liner itself. Make sure I understand. Yeah, I'm just trying to fit it in between our busy season and snow season. So I got to fit a very small window. I really have like probably about six to eight weeks somewhere right in there. 
uh, between those two seasons. And I've got to remember, I'm going to be pushing all of the city's sewer over to the ponds, which uh, I've already spoken to Sean about, um, because I'm going to be pushing the, the water over there for about a week and then pumping it back into the system and uh, doing the work that we need to do and then pumping it back into the system and then completing the, the balance of the work, however many weeks it takes us. Any questions? Oh, there's a motion. Should we have public comment? It is. All right, so uh, public comments on item 6B. Remind everybody to keep the comments for the item on the agenda. Thank you. When was this found out about that the uh, line was broken? Um, uh, how many months ago? Because what happens is uh, everything seems to get pushed up against the wall to get figure out about contracts and this uh, not to exceed thing. So if he comes in with one bid, is that good? But if only one comes in, it takes sometimes a, a little bit of time. How many people can do this project? And if this was found out about three months ago, six months ago, or no, it should have been started a long time ago instead of backed up against the wall. What some of you people like to do, especially in the city, everything's backed up against the wall. Well, we got to do this right now because if we don't, you know, we got winter coming. Well, winter comes every winter. And we got the same problems every winter. And it's a difficulty. I mean, is, is it spewing out on the ground? What's the situation to where you can't get the three bids? We just had one over in Bear, uh, Big Bear Lake. They got two bids. And uh, I don't think both of them were actually real. So I just kind of wonder, you know, you do not exceed. And then you got one person deciding on, well, we better do this because our backs are up against the wall. It only seems to happen. Why can't things be done early? If you know what the problem was, do you know what the problem was? I mean, it could have happened yesterday. So once again, well, we got to do this, and the will just have to take this bid because that's it. I mean, there's uh, not a hell of a lot of contractors around, and so you have to have extra time, or should give extra time, to make sure or get on direct mailing so you can mail some of these people to come up and invite them to bid. Because like our city, I'm going to be inspecting every contract now. I'm going to be re-looking at them. I'm going to be questioning them. I did uh, contracts a lot of my life and worked with the contractor state, state license board. In uh, Big Bear Lake, we have to seem to have this thing that is where a charter city we can just break any California law. We're at Charter City. We got three BBK lawyers sitting there watching us. Not that they know anything. Oh, they're gone. Darn it. So I would question it and you know look at the bids, double check, and then go from there. Thank you. Get out of my way. Just kidding. Um, I have one thing to say. Piss poor planning makes for piss poor deployments. Period. That's it. That's it. Oh. Uh, Any other comments from the audience? I see none. I'll give it back to the board. Justin, you have a motion? Do have a motion on the side? Can I ask David a question? Sure. Um, this has been, I mean, we've known about this for a little bit, right? It's not, we're not doing this 
Yeah. No. So, I mean, we've had a few different leaks. It took us, I believe there's three leaks in the, um, um, and it, so it took us, um, we had an investigation take place. We installed a T so we could get into the force main because they don't have manholes. We sent a camera uh, up and down the main. Had to, we had to do it twice. So that way we get the, uh, the right information. Sent that to the engineering, the engineers uh, for their evaluation. We evaluated it on our own and looked at the line. In that, during that process, we actually had an, the, the actual third leak while, while we were evaluating it. Um, they came back and we pulled record doc documents, did all the research, all those kind of things, and then um, saw there was an issue, went um, and I asked them to work, move forward with um, the design of the project. That takes, you know, it takes a couple of months for them to do that. And now, and now we're here. So there has been no, the, the planning has been done based on the emergency repairs that we've had in the past. Um, and to ensure that we can protect our waterways, we're taking this action now. Um, and that's our responsibility as professionals. I, you know, I've been doing, like I said, I've been doing this for 20, almost 25 years now. And um, this is my recommendation to move forward and and um, and line this line as soon as possible. Right. So there has been work that has been going on, and this is the recommendation from the work that has been transpired. Most definitely. Thank you. I make the motion, and we authorize six B. So staff's recommendation on 6B. I'll second. For a second. Any discussion? There's none. The roll call, please. Vice Chair Harry? Aye. Right. Director Russo? Aye. Director Segovia? Aye. Director Walsh? Aye. And Chair Miller? Aye. 6C during the August 28 meeting to Start a board meeting. I guess that would be September twenty fifth. Would be our next time we're going to get together. Again. That's correct. I'll move the that motion to be approved. I'll second. I call, please. Vice Chair Herrick. Aye. Director Russo. Aye. Director Segovia. Aye. Director Walsh. Aye. And Chair Miller. Aye. General Manager's comments. I have none. Covering board comments. Any you know, comments? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Did you have anything? No. Thank you. 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 Thank